Hi, Signature Associates and friends. Welcome to the Signature Edge Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping you design an uncommon and impactful career in the business of healthcare. Together, we are making a difference for our clients by lowering the rising costs and administrative burdens associated with great care. Engage with us as we spotlight big ideas to discover an uncommon you through leadership, teamwork, and focus on the healthcare industry. Think deeply, commit fully, and take yourself to the next level of performance. Hey, today's a special episode. And before I introduce you to my co-host, I just want to shout out to the emerging leaders. Man, what a great group of leaders at Signature Performance. And this is the very first time we're actually recording a podcast live with people watching us and headphones on. And, and, and I mean in real time. And so uh, we were a little bit nervous because this is a special group people. The Emerging Leaders Program at Signature Performance is what I would consider second to none in both the healthcare industry and beyond. It is an in-depth transformational journey that helps our associates better understand things like the signature way, how to lead people and teams, and how to really utilize what's best inside of each one of them. The, The program itself lasts about nine months and is Uh, shepherded by Melanie Mills and Danji Jansen, and does just a wonderful job getting us ready. You know, there was a time at Signature Performance when one in every 10 leaders was getting promoted. Now think about that for a second. The biggest constraint we had was the development of raw talent. How do we help people become the best versions of themselves and get ready in a short amount of time to step up and lead the signature way? Well, Emerging Leaders was an answer to that. And, and it has become something truly special in the process. So without further ado, let me introduce you to my cohorts. Amy, welcome to the show. Hi, Mark. Hi, Chris. Hello, everybody. Hi, Chris. Great. Hi, Amy. Great to be here. It's so much fun to be back in the saddle again and having a conversation with you both today. Hey, look, there's been a lot in the news lately, and and some of it um, kind of concerns me, and some of it inspires me. Uh, Why does it concern me? Well, when it comes to building community, it's become more and more important not just in life, but in business as well. And so it's a really big deal and how important making connections are at work. And I will tell you as a, as a professional and internal coach to, to a lot of associates, this is a real deal. So what scares me the most about this is that there's a, a, a growing sense uh, that uh, we're feeling disconnected from one another. And perhaps it's been the shift of work. Perhaps there could be a a lot of different reasons, but that's a concern. The the thing that makes me happy is I've seen the work in in our groups and things like emerging leaders that have given us the ability to pull things together. So with that, let's dive into this amazing topic on how to build community. Um, Amy, why don't you kick us off here? Where do we go with this? All right. I heard some amazing facts the other day that I thought I'd share with you too and see what you think about it. So I heard from Liz Bohannon, she said that 58% of Americans right now would classify themselves that they feel lonely. And if you take that group and look at just leaders, let's pull people who classify themselves as leaders, which is, we all say everyone's a leader, everyone has influence, that 75 or 70% of leaders say they feel really lonely in what they're leading. And I got to tell you, that stopped me in my tracks. I'd love to see what you guys think. Yeah, those statistics are crazy when you think about it. That, that's a large chunk of folks that are out there. And I get it from the leadership side, right? Like when people who are in that leadership position, typically it's harder to connect, right? With the people who are following that individual, they exclude them sometimes inadvertently, maybe from get togethers or activities, right? And so I can I can totally see how those stats play out. Mark, have you ever been excluded from a team connection point? Uh, you, you know what? I often find myself on the outside of great connection points and a lot of laughter. 
And I don't know why. Sometimes I just interrupt the meeting to see what I'm missing out on. So fear of missing out is real with me. But on the serious side, sure, absolutely, I felt that way. Now, I also understand, too, that I'm not Superman. I don't have enough time in the day to make sure that I'm at every single session or I can I can do all that I want to do to fill that bucket. And it's really important. And Chris, you said something that I think is really important. And I want to call back on some of your history, because as many of you know, before coming to Signature Performance, Chris was an entrepreneur and he owned his own company and, and he was doing a lot. Chris, as a leader of your own company, talk to me about how you managed the loneliness. And did you find that you were more lonely at the top than as you're continuing your career uh, in a team, a more team atmosphere like Signature Performance? I would definitely say I was. And part of the reason for that is... I think individuals assume when you're in that role, when you're in that position, that you're set, you're okay, they don't need to worry about you, right? And I think it's easier for us to look left and right and, and look at those who re re report to us and make sure those are the folks that are okay, right? A lot of uh, managing sideways, managing down, and oftentimes we forget to manage up and just check and see how people in that role uh, are, how they're feeling, you know, what what stress are they dealing with? What encouragement do they need? And, um, you know, for me, I had to look outside my company to to find those connection points, I had to find other business owners, and you had to be very intentional about networking groups and things of that nature, to stay plugged in, to not feel like I was on an island, on an island and to try and just make sure that <laughs> I didn't let the loneliness overtake uh, my mental health, right? Yeah, and I think that's an important consideration as we move up in any organization, right? As you go from producing, being a producer, kind of you have your job, you have your team, you're, you're kicking it in to then starting to lead people, something does shift. Amy, I know you have a deep sense of responsibility to everyone that you lead. Like, like that's one of the things that really, A, drives you, makes you special, but also at times I would guess maybe makes you feel a little bit lonely. Can you kind of tell us how that plays out in your role at Signature Performance and some of the things you do to combat that? Yeah, I think sometimes you're right. I really feel deep responsibility to my team because I want them to have every opportunity to be the best versions of themselves every single day. But what sometimes happens is, and I, I really try to understand their world. I try to ask questions to get a deeper understanding of where, what's what would help them to get better? What would help them to grow? But I think sometimes um, I would tell you, I don't have, I have very few people in my life who see the whole facet of what I see in a day. Everyone comes at me seeing this little chunk. They don't see the whole piece. And I think sometimes that can be, that's, that feels sometimes very lonely because I, I wish sometimes more people would help, would see more of the whole piece of who I am and what I do. And so to come back that, I, I think you got to build great partnerships in the company. I, I have some great, great partnerships at Signature. I have a great, great husband. He's, he's a listener. So I have to say that. No, he's great. And he listens and he helps me a lot. And I, and I'm, that is a really, really important relationship to me. And I have, I have great outside friends who laugh at me. And I got to tell you, they they do not see work Amy at all. They they are like, you did what today? And I was like, yeah, I know. So I think that you have people who get to see the whole facet of you when you surround yourself from all different ways and all different people from walks of life. Yeah, I think that I think that's so important. And so oftentimes when we talk about connection, connecting across with your peers, right? And if you've heard me speak at all, you've heard me talk about that. And then connecting up. And part of that connecting up is how do I serve up? Knowing what we just said and what Chris said so well um, is that it does things. There's different pressures, different responsibilities, different drivers, but make sure that that empathy goes up as well. And then think about that new person who just joined the firm. And I always call that connecting down like that person the day two they're in they're freaking out they have to learn 17 different systems all heck is breaking loose and they want to be their best version of their self do you know how meaningful it is when someone reaches out and just says hi you know my name is mark i'm your friend i got you let's go through this and so i think i think those connections are really important and chris you ran into some important information uh when it came to how the connection of organizations really impacts how business works or the results that businesses have. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, the connection points, that's the secret sauce, right? You know, it's very easy for us to find ourselves in silos. When we get our heads down, we're working on something, or we're trying to get some work done out the door. And it's easy to overlook the need to notify somebody else or the need to what's the downstream? What's the upstream? How do we make sure we're all working towards the same goal and we're not stepping on each other's toes or doing duplicate effort, right? A lot of us wasted in duplicate effort because of communication paths. And, you know, when I was in the project management office, it was really fun to see because I get to bounce around from projects in different areas of the company. And, Mm -hmm. You know, I made the assumption that everybody knew what was going on. But the reality is everybody's really focused on what they're doing. And sometimes not having that complete picture impacts the results of what's happening. So making connection points is so valuable. And I always tell this to everyone is if you can find someone who has has something or is doing something that you want to learn about, just reach out and say, hey, you want to do a 10 minute coffee? Let's talk about it. Let's see what's new. Let's see what's exciting. I want to, what you're doing is exciting. I want to hear about it. Tell me what are, what are you into? What do you like? All those kind of fun things. So really, really important. And one thing I'd like to add, Mark, is when you're, when you're feeling loneliness, because we were talking about loneliness, you know, a powerful tool is when you feel that, you know, you're not the only one who's feeling that, right? So you need to take that and use it as a trigger to say, who can I reach out to who might also be feeling lonely? And I can tell you myself when I have in my email, I have a special folder for when I get pats on the back. When that thing lights up with an unread message, right? It's like everybody, right? It's just super exciting. Hey, someone's thinking about me. Way to go. And I think that's just a cool thing that we do here at Signature is we have a mechanism specifically designed to connect us and to let us know we're thinking about each other or we appreciate each other. And uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, thanks, Chris. And Amy, when it comes to organizational experience, I know from sitting in some meetings that you lead, we, we talk a lot about connecting and how to help people. It's not like we can connect for people, but how do we create the kind of culture that's easy to connect in? Can you kind of explain a little bit of the thought process and work that goes into making sure that Signature Performance is a great place to connect and deepen relationships with others? Yeah, I think that's a great question, Mark. And this is like one of my favorite things we do on our team is we look for ways. How do you help people connect when they're nationwide? They have busy schedules, busy jobs. How do you create little nooks where people can form meaningful relationships? And I think one of the ways we we, we did a pilot this year, so far the data coming in that it's going great is we did 12 connection points about different things. So for example, we're doing um, a strengths open forum next Friday. The point of that is to deepen your strengths, but it's also to connect with people about strengths. We're gonna do specific things at that event to help people with similar strengths find each other so they can learn from each other. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting with other my fellow maximizers. Really looking forward to, to seeing who else is there. So I think those are different ways where some people are really con- comfortable connecting on Zoom. Some people are really comfortable connecting at a party. Some people are really comfortable connecting at a professional learning development opportunity. Some people are really comfortable doing community service together. And that's how they connect. They connect shoulder to shoulder instead of face to face. And I think we try to figure out different ways, get people avenues to connect, meet each other, find that best friend at work. And I think that's one of the things that we're really passionate about when we come to our organizational experience, because we know that you you will be excited to come to work if you know you have a friend at work. And I think that's really, really important. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad you brought up that maximizer thing because I was thinking the other day, it is such a unique experience to work with Melanie Mills and you on the same project in the same room. Well, I don't know that you can maximize anything further than that can happen. I also think, Mark, that you have maximizer and I believe <laughs> you just left that little chunk out. So, well, perhaps that's true. So and, I think uh, you need to own your own maximizer on that one. <laughs> I, my maximizer can't keep up with you guys. But anyway, it, it's great to have those things. And by the way, when you think about strengths as an organization and some of the reasons that we got through it, one of the secret, like we didn't know this getting into it, was one of the things that strengths did was give us a common language and a platform to connect with people and do what I just did. It's like, what's it like to be in a room full of maximizers and you actually want to get the project done? 
that sounds like heaven, Mark. We call it maximizers. It, it sounds like a long afternoon to me. <laughs> and anyway, so it's like, it's like, how do we use our strengths to help bridge this connection? And so a lot of times in one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching and the work that we do with associates, they, they always want to bridge that gap with their manager. And that's a really big deal. Like I want to know my manager. I want to be seen, heard, and felt. And I also, because I'm an emerging leader or I'm someone, I want them to feel seen, heard, and felt. And so one way that you could do that is utilize the tools that the organization provides, like strengths, to begin those great conversations and say, hey, you know, I just want to talk to your empathy right now. Give me your perspective on this subject. And you'll be so amazed because you honor people in the process. And then it, once again, drives those connections and that relationship to a deeper level. And I think that's really important. It's also really important when it comes to connecting to be able to see and hear their perspective not just your own. So now, yeah, I have my strengths. I have one block, a chunk of the way I see the world. It's the glasses or the frames at which I see things. But y'all are so different and so amazing that you have a different perspective. And when I start to listen and actively listen for your nuances and how you're seeing the world and then adjust my approach to meet you, I think I honor the relationship. I honor the connection. And I foster deeper relationships with other people around me. And you could try that both at work and in your own life. Speaking of outside of work, how important is it, team, to make connections? And how do you do that outside of work when you spend so much time fulfilling the mission of signature performance? All right. Say so outside of work, man, if you, you got to have energy for it, <laughs> right? So you got you to gotta have energy to be able to do this. But I think one of the easiest ways is to have a hobby, right? Something you enjoy doing, volleyball, bowling, you know, something that you can go out and find other people to do things with. And that when you guys are doing these things together, it helps the opportunities to arise for communication, for connection, for community. And, you know, when you do it consistently, right, back to that whole consistency thing, because you can't go to bowling one time and make friends. I, I found that doesn't work all that well. But if you go, you're seeing the same group of people there over and over, right, have that level of consistency, strike up conversations, you know, then it starts to become this place where you get to go where everybody knows your name. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. going to sing the rest of the song, but you get where I'm going. <laughs> Please do, Chris. <laughs> hey, Amy, can you tell us a little bit about Premier League soccer and how yeah. that's impacted your ability to connect with humans around the globe? Yes. Um, Chris, this is going to be news to you. I broke it to Mark earlier today. I have been officially obsessed with Premier League soccer. I have staked my claim into Arsenal, Go Gunners, and I got to tell you what it, the reason I did it, this is so crazy. First of all, I just think soccer is interesting. It's the world sport. I, I just wanted to learn a little more about it, but all my friends are into premier league soccer. And I found out that they were like talking about it all the time. I didn't know what they're talking about because they cheer for Tottenham and I'm not going to cheer for Tottenham. I did research. I watched documentaries. I picked this very strategically. But I'm excited. And so last night I sent fire engine emoji and said, life update. I'm officially obsessed with Premier League soccer. And my text just blew up. My neighbors are all into it. I think we're going to be hanging flags off our balconies. I think it's going to be a thing. But I think sometimes you can connect um, over mutual things. But it took me going. I hear you guys talk about Premier League soccer all the time. I see a lot of Arsenal fans from our from <laughs> players as well. Yeah. Um, and I, it took me doing the work to admit, to put my hand out, to see here, kind of pay attention to what they were talking about that. I was kind of like, Oh, that's nice. Um, Man City won again. Oh, okay. But now I'm like, oh, I can go and I can connect and in a deeper way. And we are all getting together to talk about Premier League soccer. What's interesting about that though, is that took you putting that out there, right? Like you had to go out and say, I am into this. And then you got the response, right? So it helps for us to be a little bit vulnerable with folks, right? To open ourselves up a little bit, let people know a little bit about us to allow for those connections to happen. Yeah. I would also say, don't say no. If first <laughs> instinct, unless it's dangerous, but if, if, if your first instinct is like, no, I'm too busy. Sometimes you got to say yes to something that you're not necessarily interested in in order to do that. I've had some opportunities where I was like, oh, that sounds miserable. It's 20 below zero. I don't need to go out at eight o'clock at night. But I said, yes, for example, book club in my community that 
doesn't sound all that fun to me. Um, I hope they don't listen, but I do it anyway because I get to connect with my neighbors. And I think that that's really important. And I sometimes read books that I'm like, I don't know if I'd ever read this. I'll just read it really fast, but I still go. And immediately because they invited me and what, how terrible is it to invite somebody and say no. And I think sometimes pay attention to the invites. They might not be that direct, but pay attention to when you get an invite, because that sometimes is a door opening for you to go make a connection. Yeah, you guys bring up some excellent points in that. By the way, side note, complete squirrel. Did you hear Amy's maximizer as she went in and did like legal research on what yeah. team she should be cheering for? I did. Uh, I did. In Premier League soccer. I, 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 mean, I This is what I I'm talking about. I did a lot about. of work. I did. You did. They're fantastic. I highly suggest cheering for ourselves. <laughs> all right. So um, now, what do we? What else could we do? So as individuals, we all have an opportunity to connect. One of the ways we know we could do that is through simple things like the company values. And one of the ways to be transparent is just to go out and say, hey, I really connect with the value of respect, for example. And when, when you when you share that information, yeah, why do you connect with that? You can use what's already in place, courage, passion, integrity, respect, and use that as a fulcrum point to build and deepen a relationship. The other thing that you could do, of course, is your is our mission statement to improve the health of our clients' business and make the lives of those we work with better. Think about that for a second. Think about just going up and sharing a one moment where you, maybe you made somebody's life better or one moment in where you really produce for a client. And for those of you who are and uh, helping our veterans directly, like every day, sharing those stories of where you helped to serve that mission helps remind everyone around you that you are doing some of the most important work that you could possibly be doing, that human lives are changing because of all the amazing things that you're putting together. So what else would you say? So now let's just say there's this pandemic coming up of loneliness what other suggestions might we have as a team that we can help our listeners to connect better? What should we do or what should we be thinking about? So I'm going to share a brief story about my car ride yesterday with my daughter. We're both tired. We both had a long day and we're sitting there in the car and I'll ask a question or, and then she would ask a question and then the conversation would just stop. And then we would argue about who stopped the conversation. All right. So Within that, I encourage all of us to ask the next question, right? So listen to what's being said and then ask a follow question or ask a related question. So my encouragement is ask the next question. Take that connection a little deeper and a little deeper. With each question, you learn more about each other. And, and to add to that, don't always talk about yourself, right? Answer the question and ask a question about the person you're talking to. So the conversation is a mutual growth and not a one-sided, lopsided growth. Oh, Chris, can we, can we just hit rewind on that real quick? That is so important. If you want to connect with other people deeply, it cannot be just about you. And it's your curiosity towards others and asking that question shouldn't be, you shouldn't be asking that question to set yourself up for your story. You should be asking that question because you really care. And that is just pivotal. That is gold, my friend. Thanks for sharing that, Chris. Amy, what would you suggest? I would say be patient when you're building new connections. I The research says it takes 90 hours to go from stranger to friend, and it takes 100 hours, an additional 100 hours to go from friend to close friend. So it takes about 200 hours to get to have someone be one of your core friends. So I would say be patient. It's not like, oh, I saw him for lunch twice. Now it, that we're friends. Well, no, it takes a lot more time than that. So I would say look at it as an investment. And so I think we've spent 200 hours together, by the way, on this podcast. So I consider you guys <laughs> my close friends. Uh, thanks, Amy. Right back at you. I, I think it's also imperative too. And one of the things that I get asked all the time is like, like having, I'm really struggling connecting with a manager, for an example, someone maybe who has some authority over you. It could even be not just your manager, it's your manager's manager or someone else you want to get to know. And one of the things that I, I like to tell people is that if you're feeling it and if you want it, be brave, you know, step out there and make contact. Don't, don't make contact with expectations because it's always awkward. And by the way, I think we talked about awkward um, earlier on, you know, being awkward. It's just what it is. We're all going to be awkward. Mark Ryan's laughing over there. Mark gets what it's like to go into a group and just feel awkward. It's okay. Just because you feel it doesn't mean you are. 
And that's important to remember. So when you when you have an opportunity and when you feel that, I call that those little urges inside, everything's well and upside. I really want to say hi. Do it. Be brave. Just go say hi. Be awkward for a little bit and do the best you can because that will start another habit that helps lead to deeper and deeper connections as we go. Final thought. When it comes to random acts of kindness, how have you used a random act of kindness in your career to help strengthen a relationship? See, guys, these are those atomic bomb questions that Mark likes to drop on us at a moment's notice. Random acts of kindness. You know, interesting, I'm reading the meeting chat here as we're going through this podcast, and the word investment came up, right? Like, every random act of kindness is an investment that we're making in that relationship, and there's no reason not to, right? Like, part of it is the motivation. Like, we're not out to do random acts of kindness to get something from it. It's really just to help those around us and to to build our connections and create relationships and and uh, continue to uh improve the lives of others right improve the lives of people we work with so i will say i'm going to put a little plug in there sometimes it helps to know what feels like kindness to the person like i'm going to tell you some people like handwritten notes that mean something to them i see like especially at work i'll see them put my handwritten notes up in their desk other people i never see it again i never even hear it. you know i never see that they even acknowledged it some people like gifts some people don't so i think i i love writing handwritten notes i probably don't do it enough if I'm being real transparent, but I love when I write handwritten notes to people. I think it's timeless. Mm, that's so good. So good. Well, and and I would just say this. I learned one thing uh, from my friend named, his name was Brent Wiesman. We played football at Dana College, which is no longer a college. So there's no proof that that story is true, but it is. You'll have to take my word for it. And I went home with him one weekend to Pierce, Nebraska. And we were in Pierce, Nebraska. If you know it, go ahead and raise your hand in the Emerging Leaders. And we were driving around. And what I noticed is Brent waved at every single person he passed that passed by. There was not one person. It was just hands up. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? That's weird. Like, you can't do that in a city. And he's like, no, we do that out here, Mark. So he got me used to it. So I came back to the big O and I started waving at everybody. I found myself getting a lot of weird looks, but it's important to me. And I was just in Europe and I found myself saying hello to complete strangers as I walked by them because of that. Now, I think it's important to acknowledge the human across from me. Doesn't matter where, what. And, and I, think, I think that's one of the ways that I like to practice um, just being kind, just kind of being intentional and open because for whatever reason I have stuck in my head that anyone who crosses my path is crossing it for a reason. And they deserve to be seen, heard, and felt. So how do I do that? Um, obviously, in the big cities, by the way, in Europe and um, uh, in Barcelona, I was down La Rumba, which is a main street. There's thousands of people. I got some weird looks. I mean, they thought I was nuts. My wife told me to stop it immediately. That that stuff can't work. You got to quit it. Uh, but I just keep doing it anyway. Team, it's been really great. And now let's leave our listeners with a challenge, okay? So we have this great opportunity to, to kind of send out a what's next. So who would like to go ahead and issue our challenge to our listeners? Uh, I'd like to challenge you that when you find yourself in a moment of loneliness, to think about someone you can reach out to and to ask the next question. I think All that's right. a perfect challenge. I don't, that, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So this week, we're going to find it. When you feel it, reach out and ask that question. Go ahead and make that move to get that done. Team, as always, you make my day brighter. Uh, thank you for being my friends, my co-hosts, and keeping me sane. To our emerging leaders who are live in this podcast with us, thank you all so much. We value you, appreciate you, and respect you. Thanks for being part of our conversation. And I am looking forward to connecting with each and every one of you. Good luck on your journey as you're getting ready to wrap up your program. It's been great. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Mark. Bye, everyone. Signature Performance is the foremost leader in healthcare administration. Your work advancing our mission is transforming healthcare in the U.S. Signature is bringing together the best and brightest in healthcare. Discover opportunities at www.signatureperformance.com careers. 
and be inspired to build an uncommon career that matters.